everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Becca and this is my channel where we talk about all the houseplant things. So today we are going to be doing a haul video of all of the cacti and plants, oh and also yard art, <laughs> that I bought when I was visiting Tucson. So a few weeks ago I posted a video showing you a bunch of really awesome planty places in Tucson. Now I did say in that video that there was going to be a part two of showing more planty places. But unfortunately, a lot of the places that I wanted to show happened to be closed on the day that I was filming. In Tucson, a lot of small businesses are closed on either Sunday, Monday, Tuesday. I think with a lot of the places I wanted to visit being small businesses, they had sort of odd hours and it just didn't line up with my trip. So with that being said, I will be going back in August. Hopefully I'll be able to make some sort of plant shopping video then, but um, I've got a lot of stuff to show you. So I wanted to get into that before I um, ramble too much about small business hours in Tucson. <laughs> So the first place I went was Box Cactus Nursery. I did not film on this day and I do slightly regret it, but also not really because I was with my dad, sister, and grandparents. And we were just having a little family outing to Box. Box Cactus Nursery, I've already done a big walkthrough tour and more or less it looks exactly the same. So I'll link that video down below and in the cards if you're interested in checking out what that place looks like. But I have been going to this nursery since I was a child. Like I have memories of myself being like, I don't know, seven, eight, nine years old going to Box Cactus Nursery. So it's kind of a nostalgic place for me and it's cool to go there as an adult when I like, know what all of these things are and anyway it's just a really great place to go i highly suggest it it's on the northwest side of town the first thing i got from there is this fence post cactus it has three pieces in it which i really appreciate i like when like column cacti have multiple pieces in it because i feel like it just makes a better statement i don't know i just think that this is much better than if there was just one and i believe this was 15 dollars. so yeah it's really cute i love this cacti this is one of my favorite cacti I love that it is so um, like structural. I don't know, I really love like the sections and the, the white on it. I just think it's really beautiful. And these are super, super popular in Tucson. Like you will find these everywhere. So basically for this, this like cactus haul, I wanted to go with some really iconic plants from Tucson. Now, not all of them are natives obviously, but a lot of them you will find in like landscaping and other you know, other various ways to display cacti. Um, this is definitely huge in landscaping, but they buy them like much, much bigger. This is definitely a very small version of what these normally are. Um, I've seen fence post cacti that are like five or six feet tall and they are glorious. The next plant I got is this euphorbia. I think that this is a snowflake something euphorbia. So it's not a cactus, but it does have very similar care and I really, really love euphorbia. Sometimes I think that I like euphorbia much more than cacti, but euphorbia is a little bit more sensitive. Cactus is definitely more hardy and able to take like, you know, colder weather, um, just harsher conditions in general than euphorbia. It has a really cool blue hue on it. And instead of spines, euphorbia has thorns. So that is one of the big differences between them. They do look very similar, but you will see that the spikes on it do look different. These are thorns, not spines. So. Yeah, really cute. I love like bluish hue plants, uh, bluish hue like cacti and euphorbia and stuff like that. I think that it's just so cool and unique. Next up, I got this barrel-ish cactus looking thing. And I don't know what this was called. This was also $15. Um, I think maybe it it is or it looks really similar to what is called like an owl eye cactus. As you can see, it's all very white and fuzzy and it all comes to a head right at the center there. So yeah, it's a really, really fun one. I love this one. It definitely is one that will bloom. As you can see, there's some pink blooms on it. And I feel like that has to be residual from when we were in Arizona because I really don't have cacti bloom here. But of course, I don't really have any cacti that actively bloom. So I'm excited to see if this one will bloom for me, especially when it's living in the greenhouse. Because if I haven't mentioned it in this video already, I, I think I have in my attempts to film because I'm having to refilm as I'm filming because I'm rambling and not making any sense. I think that's just a result of being very film rusty. So anyway. <laughs> 
Um, I am going to be making a in like a planted in cactus garden so basically it's going to look like well you know if i'm successful it will look like the cactus gardens in the garfield park conservatory so just sort of like a realistic small rendering of a cactus like a desert floor uh yeah i was really inspired by that like walking into the desert room in the garfield park conservatory made me like almost weep because it was so beautiful and it reminded me so much of home and I loved the way that it felt. It would be so cool to have a separate greenhouse just for cacti, like to have a greenhouse that is a cacti room, like that would be so insane, or like a desert room. That would be incredible. I have the space to do it, we will see. Someday, maybe I will. But anyway, for this greenhouse, I'm planning on having like a wall dedicated to my cactus collection, the short wall. So it'll only be like around 12 feet long. If I can even fit that much, like I don't know if I'm gonna be able to fill that up because you can only buy so much cacti. Anyway, the point is of all of this, <laughs> I got this and I'm really excited to see it growing in like pretty optimal conditions, lots of light, lots of heat. Uh, this summer so yeah it's gonna be super fun to see this one thriving okay last thing in this particular box this came from my parents just like plant collection so if you saw in the repot with my mom video um she you know separated these out for me so these ones are my little baby aloes my family has so many aloe like i don't <laughs> i can't even count how many aloe they have they have it growing in the ground they have it growing in pots it's everywhere so she was very happy to just um give me i think this is f f four four babies <laughs> and i'm excited i'm gonna keep them all potted together like this because i feel like it just makes a better statement look how cute <laughs> i love using aloe for like skincare and stuff like that like if i have a sunburn or it's just like really moisturizing as well it kind of smells like bo so you have to prepare to like wash it off before you go out unless you don't care that you smell like bo which like you know to each their own but i think growing up my dad would like put it on his cuticles and stuff like that it's just like really nice to um moisturize with <laughs> okay so this is a plant that i'm super excited about i am a little concerned but i think that it's going to be okay it looks like it's growing in new leaves where the other leaves have died but this is called a madagascar ocotillo and ocotillo are extremely popular in tucson they they look like this but they have like multiple shoots and they're really really tall if they're older obviously so i love ocotillo i thought it would be so cool to have like a bigger one in my greenhouse i don't think that's going to be entirely possible so i picked this up this is a as a one gallon pod, this was $23, which was a bit expensive for my liking. Um, this was at Green Things, and I did film Green Things in this in my cactus video that I filmed. Um, so you can go look at my adventures there and see what I did not buy, but enjoyed. <laughs> so anyway, this is a Madagascar Ocotillo. I don't know, like I kind of doubt that this is the one that grows around Tucson, but it looks very similar at the very least. Like if it's not the same one, it's very similar. So anyway, it's really beautiful. I love it. And there's really not much else to say about it. Like I know that this doesn't look very exciting and it sort of suffered on the drive over. Like a lot of these, um, these leaves are dead, but it will regrow some new ones and it's already kind of doing that up here. But let me show you a close up of what this looks like. Ooh, it's very cool. Like it's thorny. I feel like this is related to Euphorbia and also like the name Madagascar Ocotillo makes me think that it's not like native to the Sonoran Desert. This is probably like a Euphorbia, um, something like that. I need to do some research on this to figure out what exactly it is and how it's different from the Ocotillo that grows in Tucson. But it's really interesting because people will use Ocotillo as like um like a fence like you just get like a bunch of pieces and you just line them up and it's a fence like you know how people in like you know super cottage core places they'll just use sticks for their fence it's similar it's a similar concept um except the desert version i think it's really cool okay we got some more blue cacti i don't remember what this is called i think it's like a serious something um, anyway, it is nice and blue. It has four pieces in here and this was $15. I think that's a really great price. These grow really fast. 
um, you know, as I said earlier, cacti, or maybe I, I don't know, maybe I cut it out, it was one of my fails. I'm not sure what I even said in this video and what's gonna make it in, but cacti are not known for being super fast growers. Now, if they're in like optimal conditions, then of course they're going to grow really fast, but most of the time they're inside someone's house on a dark shelf because for some reason someone told the world that cacti and succulents don't need very much light. I have no idea why that is a thing because these things are from the desert. Why would they need low light? I just don't get it. Anyway, <laughs> uh, this, why would, why did I even go on about My memory card ran out of memory, which I think was my camera's way of telling me to just shut up and tell you about the plant. So anyway, oh, fast growing. That's what I was going on about. Okay, so this one, <laughs> in its optimal conditions is a really fast grower and I love it. I love that it is like a nice bluish hue. I just think they're so lovely and I think that these spines are kind of soft. Oh yeah, it always freaks out Nicole when I touch cacti. Ouch. Okay, be careful how you touch it. But if you go at the right angle, you can sort of pet your cacti and it's kind of fun. But be careful about which ones you do that with. If it's like very spiky like this one, then you can. But if it has like very, very tiny spikes, don't touch it. <laughs> Let me show you the one not to touch. This one right here, do not touch these because these are the spines that are literally like little hairs. And you just have to look at this thing and you will have little spiky hairs on you and it is so annoying. Like I kept finding these all over me for like a few days after I picked this up. Like I bet I'm gonna have one in my fingers just from holding the pot. So anyway, <laughs> this is a Santa Rita prickly pear or an Apuntia uh, and I really love these. These are very, very common in landscaping in Tucson which is why I bought it. Again, I'm going for the iconic, how, uh, not houseplants, iconic cacti to make my little display. And you know, I kind of regret getting this one because it has all those little hairs and it's just a pain to deal with. But once I put it in the display, I'm not gonna be touching it. So I'm, I'm hoping to you know get that in there pretty soon so that I don't have to worry about getting these all over me. But I really love this one for its bluish hue and they're really pretty when they get really big and prickly pear just have a tendency to spread out they're kind of, I wouldn't say they're invasive, but they definitely spread. And this is one of the prettier versions of the Apuntia that I see growing in Tucson. So that's why I picked this one. I think it's super cute. And it's actually kind of like warming my heart seeing this in my home right now, like looking at it in the viewfinder next to my face. I'm like, wow, I feel like familiar. I, I feel at home right now. I don't know what that is. Like maybe somebody from this part of the country might feel comfortable around a, an oak tree. I there's just something about this that is comforting, despite the little hairy spines. Um, yeah, it's really comforting. Okay, I don't know the name on this one, but this is another big favorite of mine. It is a nice like yellowy color, and I've seen these get really big too, and I just love them. So yeah, I don't really have much to say about it. I mean, a lot of these are starting to run together and look the same, but as you can see, it has a nice yellow hue, like all the spikes are yellow, so it has like a kind of yellow outer glow. It's really nice, and this one was $14.99, so yeah, super beautiful. I think that's, oh no, there's three more things I need to show you. Hold on, and I should clarify, that's three more plants, because I also bought yard art, and I'm really excited to show you the yard art, if you're interested in yard art, and pottery, so okay. We're, we're still going. <laughs> wow, so. This plant actually kind of scares me like now that it's sitting in my house I'm a little alarmed and also they scare me in nature too because they're like a Forbidden bowling ball <laughs> So this let's see if there's an actual name. Okay golden barrel cactus Cool. Okay, so it is a full sun part shade reflected heat plant hardy to 10 degrees Fahrenheit That's awesome. It I mean honestly this might be hardy to Columbia most of the time. I mean, okay, no, it wouldn't actually because it got down to like negative nine or something two years ago. But last winter, it probably would have been fine. Anyway, this is like one of the most iconic Tucson plants. You will see this everywhere in landscaping. If you've ever been to the desert, you've seen these. <laughs> There's another version of a, the barrel cactus that has like, it's like a more reddish hue and it has spines that come out and like kind of hook like this. 
That one's pretty cool too, but I chose to do this one because I feel like it's a bit more striking. But anyway, I really love this like yellow glow and as I'm holding it, it literally looks fake. Like I probably could have just bought a fake one and put it in the arrangement and like nobody would have noticed. But this thing like looks scary. Like these spines have like little horizontal lines on them. Like they did not come to play. Like this, this plant is serious about defending itself. And that is something that I can respect, you know, because they're just full of water. They gotta be, they gotta be careful here or else someone's gonna take a bite out of it. But anyway, yeah, golden barrel cactus. I'm really excited. In my cactus display, I really wanted to have some desert native florals and just like things that weren't exactly cacti. So that is why I picked these up. Um, let's see what this is actually called. Lavender cotton. Lavender cotton, that's all it says. <laughs> so as you can see, it is a like really muted, sagey green color foliage with these yellow puff flowers. And this like green color foliage is extremely common for flowers in Tucson and just like the desert. Um, a lot of them have a very muted color and I, I'm gonna guess it's because there's a coating over the leaves to help um, like a sunscreen sort of, like how the blue cacti have that sort of white powder on them where you can wipe it off. That's sort of their sunscreen, their natural sunscreen. So I'm gonna assume that's what that is. Um, yeah, it looks like it's just like very deeply ingrained in the plant. And these leaves are so small that I actually feel kind of weird calling them leaves. Let me show you a close up of what this looks like. Okay, there you go. So it kind of just looks like, um, I can't even describe it. Like, yeah, I literally don't even know what to describe it as, but they look so interesting. And it's just like spikes with like smaller spikes and it's soft. I don't know, it's really weird. Actually, I don't think I've ever looked at one of these like up super close because I just enjoy them as a whole, but looking at them on a, like a micro level, it's very interesting. So <laughs> I will say these are these suffered the most in the drive over um, just because they are more delicate and um, they look like they're gonna be okay. But honestly, if anything was gonna die, I would expect these to die. Let's see if it says anything about their care on here. Slow growing rounded evergreen broadleaf shrub, height one to two feet, hardy to about 10 degrees, do not overwater likes sun. So I don't know, it's been sitting out in the rain the last couple days, so maybe it is not liking all of the water, but once it's planted into the desert display, obviously it's not gonna be getting as much water as it would if it was like out in the rain. So I don't know, I don't know. I don't know what they mean by do not overwater. Maybe people will assume because it's a flower it needs more water, but it doesn't. So maybe they're just reminding people of like, this is a desert plant. It doesn't need you to water it. I have no idea. Anyway, all that being said, they look really cute and I love them so much. I can't wait to get them in the mix and just have like variety of like texture and color. I think it's going to be really awesome. And not to mention the yellow on these um, flowers is going to bring out the yellow and like the barrel cactus and the yellow and like the um, column long yellow cactus thing too. So it's gonna be really nice to tie all together. Okay, that is all for the plants. Now let's talk about pottery. Okay, I grabbed this pot right here. I was imagining it for my saguaro cacti, but I, cactus, but I think I'm actually going to be planting the saguaro. I'm gonna be planting most of these things into the display. So I don't know why I got this actually, now that I think about it, but I think it was like $35. Oh, let's see. Is there a sticker? I don't see a sticker anymore. But it came from Carmona Planter, um, made in Spain. So they oh, they have a website. Let me show you the let me show you the tag just in case you're interested. Here you go. They had a bunch of different shapes and sizes, but in general, like this was the vibe of them. And I really, really like this. I think it'd be really pretty to put like annual flowers in too. Like if I added this to like my cluster of pots display up at the front of my um, sidewalk, I think that would be really nice too. But yeah, it's super pretty and it's terracotta. So I think it was pretty affordable. I think it was like $30, which isn't terrible for a pot this big with like this, um, design and detail. It's really nice. While I was at Green Things, I had to go over to their little pottery village and get some more of this, my favorite pottery Talvera design. So this is called Talvera Pottery. 
It is um, Mexican pottery basically and it has a lot of well this type of pottery is known for having lots of different colors and like designs like this. I tend to prefer a bit more of the muted colors just because it fits in a little bit better with the rest of my stuff. I bought this pot so it's the same designer but you can see that there's some slight differences and also this pot has had plants in it so it has some like deposits on it but I don't remember it ever being this dark and so you can see the differences in sort of like the style um, there were a few pots that looked like this one still but I think that they're sort of switching their design to be only like in this like belt section as like and rather than being like all over it with this and I don't know which I prefer actually I think I prefer this because it's a bit more minimal but I also got this one um, I noticed they had a bunch of other like designs and like shapes and stuff too so this would actually be so cute to pot like these in actually maybe not this specific one maybe the blue one like this like I would totally pot this in here because that would be so cute and like honestly you don't need to repot cacti like ever uh, make sure that you're fertilizing but for the most part you're, you're probably not gonna have to repot them for like years because their root systems are so small but definitely they do have, they do grow their root systems though, trust me, because I, I used to have these like really long cactus planters and for so long I just didn't even think about all of those root systems being in there together until I repotted it and they were all like filling up the pot. It was actually really amazing to see because I don't usually see that, but they will fill up a pot. It'll just take a really long time. So I really liked this one because it looks like like an eating pot, like a cooking pot or something. I thought it was really cute. And of course they all have drainage holes, thankfully. Um, oh, they have, there's prices on the bottom of here. So this one was $20. This one was 15. Um, also in addition to these two, I got a bigger one. I think it was like 30 or $40, but it's like this big, this deep, and it has a catch, like catch tray on the bottom of it. And I think I'm going to pot my big, um, what is it called? Uh, euphorbia, my really tall euphorbia. I'm gonna think I'm gonna pot that in that pot because it is shallow, which is great, um, but it's also much bigger than its current pot and it has been needing to be repotted for probably two years. <laughs> so I'm gonna do that eventually. I'm actually really scared to repot that plant just because it's so big. I'm definitely gonna need two people on that one. So anyway, that is it for pottery. Now, yard art. It's time for some yard art, you guys. We're gonna start with something that my grandpa made for me. My grandpa really likes doing woodworking stuff and he has started to make, well, actually, I, don't, I wouldn't say he started. He's been making these for a couple years, but he makes birdhouses and this one is like really rustic looking and he thought that it would do like it would blend in really well with my property which is absolutely right like when I look at this this screams this is at my house like you know what I mean it just feels like so right so anyway he made this for me which is so sweet it has like a little chimney on it that's painted black and I just love the details and like the um, reclaimed wood vibe. I just think it's so cute. Um, but yeah, I don't know. I just want to keep showing it on camera because it's so cute. But yeah, there it is. Thank you, Grandpa. I love it. I cannot wait to put it up. And oh, hot tip. If you are in my area, like the a place where you would put up a, a bird house <laughs> and you also have snakes or raccoons or things like that, what I have learned is I see this a lot. If there's like a bird feeder or a bird house, um, people will put like a little tube on the bottom of the tree, like on the trunk. And that makes it harder for snakes and raccoons to climb up and like get into the birdhouse and like eat the eggs or the babies, um, which is a really sad thing, but this is nature, right? Nature is metal. So <laughs> nature is, why did I just casually say that? Like I'm 15 years old. Anyway. Um, Point is, you can put those little things on your trees to help prevent raccoons and snakes from getting into the birdhouses and so that the birds feel a bit safer um, nesting in these. I currently have two birdhouses at my house and nobody has ever moved in and I wonder why. It might be because of my dogs are scaring the birds, I have no idea, but if you have any tips for convincing birds to move into your birdhouses, let me know because if this stays vacant for too long, 
I'm gonna be really sad. So let me know your tips. Okay, so the first yard art besides the birdhouse, I guess the second piece of yard art is this really beautiful Talvera butterfly. And I really love this because number one, I love Talvera, but number two, sunflowers. Sunflowers are one of my favorite flowers and I love butterflies. So I thought that this was just so beautiful. It's a perfect like marrying of a few of my favorite things. And it was $15 and it has these little antenna that move. Um, it's just really cute and I can't wait to hang this in my garden. It's gonna be so cute out there The next thing I'm going to hang in my garden is this gorgeous Dragonfly so okay. I went to Mexico while I was visiting my family in Tucson and There is this really awesome market in well We, we went to Puerto Penasco and there's a really awesome Market and you can go shopping and buy a bunch of fun stuff. So I bought some yard art mostly I also bought some shoes Classic, but anyway, this is one of the pieces of yard art that I bought and it is a sort of mosaic looking Metalwork and if you couldn't tell it is a dragonfly and I love that it's green because I want my decor to Fit in with the rest of the like nature like I kind of think it's really beautiful when these types of things just sort of blend in And if you look closer you see it, you know what I mean? I don't know I think it's gonna look really cute either in the garden or I might put it like on a tree like right outside of my house I'm not exactly sure yet. Where would you hang this? Tell me what you would do with it because it is just so beautiful. Oh my gosh and the back is all metal uh, just, just just in case anybody is curious, but yeah it's so pretty, I love it. <laughs> now in the realm of just like cute yard art that I have no idea what I'm gonna do with, we've got this, it's a caterpillar. <laughs> um, and it reminds me of the movie Robots. Like, do you guys remember that movie? I feel like that is like such a weird childhood movie that maybe not everybody watched as a kid, but I watched it as a kid and this literally reminds me of robots. It's just a cute little metalwork um, caterpillar and I think I'm just gonna put it like in one of my garden beds uh, and just sort of let things grow around it and see if anyone notices it. Like, I don't know, I think it'll just be a cute little addition to my, um, I think I'm gonna put it in like the big garden bed right, out, right outside of my um, front door, so. <laughs> it's so cute, it's holding a little leaf. Like, I don't know, I just, I had to get it. Okay, and the last piece of um, anything that I'm gonna be showing in this video. Oh wait, you know what? There was another piece of pottery that I forgot about. Okay, I'll find that and show it to you in a second. But look at this beautiful flower metal thing, metal flower thing. And it has a really cute, um, what is this called? Hummingbird attached to it. It's just so cute. I think this would be really sweet to put um, maybe in the garden or something. I'm not exactly sure where I wanna put this, but it's so beautiful. And um, I was going back and forth for a while on whether or not I was gonna buy this, but then I found out that the vendor took debit cards, so I bought this and then obviously the other metal pieces because I was like, Ugh, I only have like 20 bucks in cash and I don't know if I wanna spend it all on this. And then I ended up spending like almost $200 with this guy because it's so beautiful. This stuff is awesome. And I haven't seen this stuff sold like anywhere besides Tucson and Mexico. So I think that this is like uniquely Sonoran desert decor. I don't know, if it's not, let me know. If there's like a place in the US that I could buy this stuff too, that'd be really cool. But again, I haven't seen it sold like Stuff like this is not sold at my garden centers here, but in Tucson, definitely you'll find stuff like this at your garden centers. But anyway, I just thought it was really cute and beautiful and I still don't know what I'm gonna do with it, but I will figure it out and I will let you know. Okay, the last thing is this piece of pottery. I totally forgot to show it to you, but look at how beautiful this is. This was made by Joanna Hennigan. I have a few other pieces made by her. Let's see if I have any in here. Ah. Yeah, this desert, or this mountainscape. This mountainscape is also made by Joanna. Um, she makes really beautiful pottery, like um, plant pottery and also mugs and other, you know, fun things for around the house. She's currently moving, so I don't know when she's gonna start making again, and I don't know if she's still going to be making desert designs after she moves. Um, you can follow her on Instagram if you wanna keep up with what she's doing. That's what I always tell people, because, you know, when you have, like, 
pottery artists, um, usually they're not gonna have something in stock like all the time. Um, so they do like releases and things like that. So if you follow her on Instagram, I think she also has an email list maybe, you can get on the list um, or just see her Instagram updates and know sort of what's going on and when she's gonna have restocks. Um, but I also love how you can see like, just this section of the saguaro. I don't know, I feel like this really captures like the size of saguaro. And also I love the blooms on them. I think that saguaro blooms are some of the most beautiful blooms. Like just cactus blooms in general are some of the most beautiful flowers. And the only flower that I've seen that looks kind of similar to a cactus bloom is the clematis. And I wanted to buy clematis so bad this year, but they were all sold out by the time I got back out to Vintage Hill. He said that they sold like really fast and it was the most they had ever had in stock. And then like they were sold really fast. And I'm really upset about it because I fell in love with like a few different varieties. And honestly, now that I'm thinking about it, I feel like I fell in love with those varieties because they looked so much like cactus blooms. Actually, you know what? I'm gonna put a side by side of this clematis bloom with a cactus bloom. And you tell me if you think they look similar because it might be the most similar flower that I've been able to find. And obviously they are very, very different plants, um, but the blooms, like they kind of remind me of each other. And maybe I'm gonna go out to the store today, maybe to a big box store, or maybe to the other nursery in town and see if I can find any clematis because I really need something to climb on the trellises that I have sitting outside of my front door because right now I have four empty trellises because the plants that I bought for it last time did not um, survive. I don't know why, but they didn't. I'm sad about it, but they need to be replaced. And maybe now that I'm talking about this and I've made the connection between cactus blooms and clematis blooms, I think I actually need them now. <laughs> uh, so anyway, that is the video of everything that I stuffed in my car. I'm coming back from visiting my family in Tucson and my whole cactus shopping extravaganza. I hope that you enjoyed and got some inspiration for maybe buying some cactus at your local nursery. Um, I will say if your local Vintage Hill has a really, really awesome cactus selection. Um, and I actually went there the other day and I was just like, even after seeing the Tucson selection, I was still thinking that their selection was really awesome. So if you are local, they have a great selection, but you know, lots of places around are getting more cacti, I feel. And if you take care of them, you will have a cactus for the rest of your life. Honestly, they will live forever if you treat them right. <laughs> I guess that goes for any house plant. Like it'll live as long as you are treating it right and like giving it what it wants. I mean, it's really not groundbreaking information, Becca. I don't know. I don't know why I'm still talking. Anyway. <laughs> We're gonna leave it at that. Thank you so much for watching this video and I will see you in the next one. Bye.